Okay, so there's a counter going up, so that's the new thing I'm going to look at to ensure that I'm actually recording. This is recording, hopefully. Um, so let's just recap what we did yesterday. So I'm going to apologize to YouTube for not recording my lecture yesterday. If I get the chance, I may book to like a lecture at the end of the year and give that lecture and give the fundamental theorem of calculus lecture just so I could fill in my playlist. I kind of feel bad that there's like two holes in it. So maybe I'll, would you, any of you show up if I re-gave the fundamental theorem of calculus? I just need one person to show up, really. Okay, so at least, at least a couple people. And then maybe I'll re-give the trig integral one from yesterday. Okay, so yesterday, let's just recall, we did something called trig integrals. Oh boy, that's T, uh, integrals. And um, let's just, here's one of the examples. Let's just do it over again so I can remind you of the technique. Uh, the technique is basically to try and generate squares in order to exploit um, how trig behaves nicely with squares. So what's the, what's the new form here for this integral? Yeah, so we want to look at this. We want to make that a square. So that's a square to the 1. And then we get cos squared x, and then we get sine x dx. Now, the fact that we are unsquaring the one with an odd power is deliberate. It's because we want this extra term here, so we can swap it out. I accidentally moved this just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, stop. It's actually not bad. Okay. Thank you. OK, um, so then we're going to just rewrite using some of our trig identities. This one's simple, 1 minus cos squared x, cos squared x sine x dx. And then if we perform the substitution, u is equal to what? What substitution do I use? Cosine x. Which means du is equal to minus sine x dx. Which means I can rewrite this integral as the integral of 1 minus u squared uh, u squared and then sine x dx gets replaced with minus du. So I'm just going to put a minus out there, du. And then you can move from here. Now you should be able to complete this. Uh, the other method is if, if I just exchange these, inter um, these powers, uh, we would get an expression everything in sine with an extra cos x dx. And we can do that type of swap out. Right? That's the reason we're searching for the one with the odd power. The odd power one is going to leave an extra term here, which is useful because we need to replace sine x dx with the du to get a new integral term. The other thing that we did yesterday, among others, uh, was dealing with integrals like this. And just give me one step and we'll call it on this question. How do I rewrite this into a more amenable type of integral? Yeah, so this is going to be sine squared x squared cos squared x squared. And what replacement do I do now? One minus cos. Yeah, you use the half angle. Or is it half angle? Yeah. It's 1 minus, minus yeah. cos 2x over 2 one squared. Minus. And then 1 plus cos 2x over x squared dx. Over two, two, two. Oh, yeah, thank you. Over 2. <coughs> and now everything's in a lower power. And now we just treat it as new. Right? Then either you'll be in one of the earlier type of cases, or you'll have even powers again. But in any case, if you see both even powers, this is the first transformation that you do. Speaking of Batman, hello, Batman. I am the bat. OK, so that was trig integrals. And we did that yesterday to prepare for, is this the hit? Oh, no. To prepare for trig substitution, which is the real technique. Yesterday was just sort of preparatory for this. Now, these trig substitutions, this is a technique for dealing with the following forms. x squared plus a squared, x squared minus a squared, um, a squared minus x squared. 
Right? That is to say, it's a technique for dealing with sums or differences of squares where we assume that one of them is the unknown. So like this is unknown and the a is constant. Now, the technique uses something called a reference triangle. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use the hated board. We're going to have to refer to it. Forbidden board. OK, so we're going to have to be using these reference triangles. So here's, the, uh, here's what we want to do. So each three, or each one of these three, we can designate as the side of a right-angled triangle. So let's look at this one first. So what x squared plus a squared, what triangle can we get x squared plus a squared onto? Right, x squared plus a squared. What's that very close to? Yeah, yeah, so label the rec this triangle for me. Yeah, so this side is x squared plus a squared. So I'm just going to say that this is the side of one of the triangles. Then this is x and this is a. I know we could switch these, but um, for a technical reason, you've got to make x the opposite, because we're going to be isolating for x. OK, what's next? Uh, we have x squared minus a squared. How can I get that onto a triangle? Just rearrange Pythagoras. Well, which, which? Yeah, that's it. This is something you may just have to remember. That if you're given a sum of the squares, that you put it on the hypotenuse. That if you're given the difference, and the difference, you're subtracting the constant, then that goes on the opposite. Once the opposite is labeled, these other two sides are forced. So tell me what this has to be. Recall, this squared plus this squared equals this squared. So there's a minus here. So what does this have to be? Nope. So that would be x squared plus 2x squared minus a squared. So try the other one. OK, this is a. Then this is a squared plus x squared minus a squared, which leaves x squared. OK, so once you label one of the sides, the other two sides are forced by your labeling. So again, <coughs> just remember that sum of squares is the hypotenuse. The difference of squares with the constant being removed is the opposite. Any guesses for? Where the last one goes, this is going to be the a squared minus x squared one. Adjacent. adjacent. Yeah, OK, so we're going to make this the adjacent. Whoops. a squared minus x squared, which means that this has to be what? Remember, this squared plus this squared has to be this squared. So just look at the thing we have to remove. Yeah, so this has to be x, that opposite. And then the hypotenuse has to be a. OK? And then once we have these reference triangles, we get all of the trig. Right? So I can pull off any of the trig identities I want from these triangles. OK? So why am I telling you this? Let's, let's do an example, and I'll show you how it works in practice. So. That's the technique, is to use the triangle. So I'm just going to try to do as many examples as I can today, because I think that's really the only way to gain competency at these things. OK, so here's the example. One over four plus x squared half dx. OK, so what's our reference triangle? So we found, one, we found the form. Right, so that's when you see an integral and you see it like a sum of squares, alarm bells. Right, alarm bells should be going off. Perhaps a trig substitution is the thing I should be using. So, what is the what is the reference triangle? Last one we did was the adjacent. Hmm? No, no, no. Sum, sum. Both are positive. Uh, so hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Yeah. So what's the hypotenuse is going to be two squared plus x squared which means this is going to be x, which means this is going to be 2. OK, so now you want to do a substitution on this. 
So I want to isolate something. I want to introduce a trig, trig function uh, for x. So how am I supposed to isolate x using this triangle? Well, that's complicated and the thing I want to get rid of. So forget about it. The remaining uh, sides are these. So what is x over 2? Tan. Not, not a trick question, right? So the, the ratio of these sides is tan theta. Okay, this means that I'm going to perform a substitution x equals 2 tan theta with uh, dx equal to 2 secant square, squared theta d theta. Okay, why will this help? Well, let's just check it out. Okay, so let's do those substitutions. What do I get? So dx has to get replaced by 2 secant squared theta d theta. That's 2 secant squared theta d theta over what? OK, so that's going to be 4 plus 4 tan squared theta, yeah? And that is going to be taken to the half. OK, let's start factoring stuff out. I'm just going to remove that 2. There's a 4 and a 4, so I can factor that 4 out. But it's inside a square root, so when I pull it out, it becomes a 2. OK? So that's a 2. Top, we're going to have secant squared theta. Bottom, we're going to have uh, 1 plus tan squared theta to the half. And from yesterday, what did we learn? How do I go from here? I didn't write it on the board, but yes. What is this? Secant squared. So you get secant squared theta over secant squared theta to the half d theta. So that just becomes a secant theta. If I divide it out by that, this whole thing ends up being secant theta d theta. Agree? Two statements here. And I'm not going to, I'm just going to use, I wrote it on the board, I think. Yeah, there. That being said, you should be able to integrate this. That should be no problem. This is the, it's 1 over cos, and you do a substitution, u equals cos x. So do this as an exercise tonight. Integrate this. But for now, I'm, just so we don't spend all day writing integrals all over the board, I'm just going to continue over here. <coughs> uh, so can, let's, let's help professor today. OK. Lon x, or sorry, lon theta, lon absolute secant theta plus tan theta plus c. Now, what was the original integral with respect to? So can I answer like this? No, how do I undo it? Stop trying to rearrange everything right, for a single variable. This is not how we substitute. Like, think more broadly. I don't want you to start trying to go find the arctan of, of something. We don't need that. How can I get the values for c? What is tan theta again? It's right there. We have the reference triangle. Just read it off the reference triangle. No, no arithmetic required. OK, so help me read it off the. Help me read it off the triangle. What is secant theta? Okay, so remember, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So the hypotenuse is what? Um, 4 minus, or sorry, 4 plus x squared over the adjacent, which is 2. And then tan theta is what? Oh, yeah, we, were just, we already wrote that. That's the integral. This is the technique. That's it. This, like, I could do one example and send you to the walls. I'm not, but this basically is the technique. You, you find some type of difference of squares. You use a reference triangle to do a very particular trig substitution, which ends up having a bunch of nice properties. Right? Everything gets cleared. Namely, the nice property is this. You see how we went from a square root on the bottom to not a square root on the bottom? And not only did we go from a square root on the bottom, it was a square root of a sum of something. And we got to a not a square root of a single thing. So that is quite the simplification. All right.
Mull that over, we'll do more. Many, many more. Mull it over, look at it, stare at it, digest it. Screw you, YouTube. Oh, there's one more thing I have to tell you. I'm glad I remembered this. Okay. If you were to look this in the back of the textbook, you would see that it would be, well, I'm not going to say wrong, but it's not going to look at the thing in the back of the textbook. They do a sort of clever but hidden simplification here. I could factor out that half, yeah? So you get something along the lines of ln 1 half times 4 plus x squared plus x plus c. But then how can I simplify the product across a ln, or a ln across a product? Well, you get ln of this plus ln of a half plus c. But um, since that's a constant, I don't actually need to write this. Like I'm just saying plus something constant. So they don't even write this. They'll just do that. So you'll see that you're very close, but you're going to be off by some, you're off by some uh, coefficients in your lawn, which is actually only being off by a constant, which, which is actually already accounted for. Right, by the integral. Okay, so if you look, yes, I don't care on a test. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what you're doing. Okay. That was not my question. Oh, okay, what's the question? What's the question? But the answers are equivalent, so it doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, of course the answers are equivalent, but um, I'm just trying to, uh, to tell you ahead of time that yes, it is equivalent. Right, you just have to sort of do this uh, clever, clever thing. And uh, this is, this is a, li listen, right, uh, this, there was a 90% chance that was the question you were going to ask. Uh, I would accept this more or less on a test. But know that you, you can get it, like, if you're going to write this in a table of integration, you'd, you'd write this. This is clearly simpler. Right? Just keep that in mind if you're looking stuff up in the back of the textbook. That's the problem with these trig integrals. You're never quite sure when you're right. Because they'll write something in the back of the book, and then you have to, like, try and manipulate the answer to look like the one that you have. So. That's why I need your help with one question today. I'm not sure if I'm right. Actually, I think even in the notes, I wrote something along the lines of, there's no way that this is correct. <laughs> OK, let's try another one. Maybe um, I'll write it on the board, and then you try to get me the reference triangle and perform a single substitution. And let's see how that goes. Or do you want me to do one more and then deploy you? All right. OK, let's try this one. Integral x squared over 9 minus x squared to the half dx. Set up the reference triangle. I'll give you one lap.
Are you sure? Oh yeah, at least we got the first very first one wrong. You said it's not easy. I bought the you. Know, you So it's this one you're using, yeah? Yeah. Okay, because there's two with a difference, right? But this one has the, the, the difference between the differences is that we're removing the constant in this one, and the constant is not being removed in this, it's being added in this one. So just be careful. It's a little bit of a nuance. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so what reference triangle do we have here? Okay, so we should have theta here. Uh, this is a difference, and we're removing the unknown, so that should be the adjacent. So the adjacent is going to be 3 squared minus x squared, which forces this side to be what? x, which forces this side to be 3. So what substitution do we have here? Well, I want to isolate for x because I want to do a substitution. So I want to know what the ratio x over 3 is. What's the ratio of x over 3? That's opposite over hypotenuse. Sine theta. This means that x is equal to 3 sine theta is going to be our substitution. And we also have that uh, dx is equal to 3 cosine theta d theta. Okay, so there's our substitution. So dot, dot, dot. Continuing. Um, so what new integral do we have? So we have integral x squared. That's going to be 9 sine squared theta uh, dx. So that's going to give us another 3 cos theta d theta over uh, 9 minus x squared, so that's going to be 9 minus 9 sine squared 
beta a half, <coughs> which is going to give us what? Okay, so I'm going to have we have a nine and a three. So I'm just going to put that out here. On the bottom, we're going to pull out a nine, which becomes a three. We're going to be left with what? Sine squared theta cos theta. And let me just do two things at the same time, or I'm going to be writing all day long. This is what's left is one minus sine squared. Yeah? Someone nod. OK. So 1 minus sine squared is what? Cos squared. cos squared. And if I put that 1 half on it, what am I left with? Cos. OK? I fully worked it out in the notes. So if you want the full work, you can see it. OK, what does that simplify to? So the 3's cancel. You're left with 9 <coughs> integral. Well, those coses <coughs> cancel. Sine squared theta d theta. Um, you want to do it, or do you just want to use the identity? Let's do it, because you should, you should know how to do this from yesterday. What do I replace this with? From yesterday. Even, even. Yeah, so what do we use? Half angle formula. Uh, this is going to become integral. What is it? Um, one, is it minus or plus? I always forget. Minus cos 2 theta over 2 d theta. So what is this equal? You're going to get 9 halves. Please help me. 9 halves theta minus <coughs> sine 2 theta over 2 plus c. Is that right? Okay, yeah. Oh, sure. Can I now, now what I need to do is report back the integral in terms of x. Can I do that yet? Can you tell me what sine of 2 theta is? Sine 2 theta. Well, not easily, not yet. How could we, like, we could easily pull off what values from this? Sine theta, cos theta, tan theta. That's easy. Those are just the ratios of the sides. How can I get the two out of here, basically, is what I'm trying to say. We should use the double angle formula, professor. Yes, we should use the double angle formula. How can I use the double angle formula to pop out the two theta? That's, those aren't the only two angle formulas. You have a whole page of trig identities, right? Well, I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little hint. Two sine theta cos theta. Yeah, 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 OK, sure. just want to see. Oh, you're just testing me. I appreciate it. OK, so everyone savvy with that exchange? OK, so now what we're left with is uh, 9 half theta minus uh, 9 half sine theta cos theta plus c. I should have left more room, but OK, anyways. What's theta? Well, we're sort of boned. So the only thing we can say about theta, if pick any of, well, don't pick arc tan. Pick the easiest arc. Yeah. Um, arc sine of x over 3. We could have picked any of the arc sines, but don't include that one. This is going to make it more complicated. Choose the easiest one. All right, so we're going to get arc sine um, x over 3 uh, minus 9 half. What's sine of theta? That's just x over 3. <coughs> And what's cos of theta? Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, yeah? Yeah. So that's going to be 9 minus x squared over 3 plus a constant. It looks complicated, but if you just stay organized, it's fine. And you're just de deploying a bunch of trig identities. But if you don't stay organized, this will be impossible. You'll get really frustrated real quick. So for the first theta, when you did R sine, you whatever you want? Well, you could, use any, you could use any identity off the reference triangle. But like, why, why not choose the easiest one? Well, I, I'm not even saying it's easier. It just looks nice. Like, arc, arc sine of x over 3 looks nicer than arc cos of root 9 minus x squared over 3. 
But both would actually be the current, like both are true antiderivatives. For your consideration. <laughs> Integral one over root twenty five x squared minus four dx. I'll show you a shortcut. Try to set up the reference triangle. But I am going to show you a, a trick here. Yes. 
squared plus a squared is 5 squared, 25 x squared. We need real labels, right? We need those labels. I think, uh, so uh, yeah, if you're trying to pattern match, for one, that's the A. Uh, well, you got to make it properly. This is a difference. So what would the reference try? Isn't it just variable minus constant? Okay, so it seems most of you actually found the correct reference triangle using the trick. So good job. Um, the textbooks and other people would tell you to do a substitution on this first, which is a huge waste of time, or to simplify this, which is another huge waste of time. So the best <coughs> reference triangle to set up, which is going to save you a lot of arithmetic, is the one that most of you found, which I'm really happy about, actually. Um, so let's just recall that uh, we can rewrite, I'm just going to rewrite this in place, which this is good habit, by the way. This is 5x squared minus 2 squared. So some of the strategies would have you do a substitution u equals 5x just to get it to look exactly like the reference triangles. But the shortcut to this is just to use this as the label itself. OK, so we have the difference. So do I, where does this go, opposite or adjacent, according to the reference triangles? Opposite? I'm trusting you. Yes. So we're going to be 5x squared minus 2 squared. So it, you just look for the thing that you're removing. And that has to be the thing on the other that's not the hypotenuse, because you're adding it. Right? This thing doesn't get added. That's the result. So this has to end up being 5x. Just be careful that you're not putting in the squares. Right? You don't write 25x squared there. This is the square root of that. OK, so what? So here's the str Again, we want to do a replacement for, um, well, this time actually we want to replace 5x. So we know that 5x over 2 is what? Be careful. This is adjacent over high. Oh, this is hypotenuse over adjacent. Secant. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. The reciprocal of that is secant. Well, so um, but then you're okay. So shh, that's a good question. You can also do this. Um, if you want to do that, but then your substitution looks something like this. So you want the variable it's going to be easier in terms of integration. Like that, you don't want to start introducing divisions. That will complicate things. That's why I always want to put the fx in the numerator. And that forces my hand for what ratio to choose. Yeah? OK. So this means then what? 5x, and it, like don't isolate everything for x and y all the time. Right? We have to make a substitution on 5x. Right? So say what 5x is, not what x is. Right? It's going to work out, but it's a hell of a waste of time. So 5x is going to be 2 secant theta. Yeah? OK. Which means that uh, dx is going to be 2 fifths <coughs> What's the derivative of secant? I wrote that on the board, didn't I? Yeah, secant x tan x. So this is secant theta tan theta d theta. OK, so let's rewrite our integral. Uh, that's going to be equal to what? OK, so we have integral. Let's swap out the dx first. The dx is going to be 2 fifths secant theta tan theta d theta. And I was discussing this with other people in my office yesterday. Like, I'm not willy-nilly replacing this d theta. I'm not just saying, oh, look, there's theta's in here now. You have to be taking the integral with respect to theta. This dx has to go through substitution like everything else. This dx was a substitution. This, this. I wrote an equality for dx and switched, put it in. All right, so this d theta appears after substitution, not just because I desire to take an integral by theta. Like the substitution was deliberate in that respect. OK, so what do we got on the bottom? So on the bottom, we're going to get, so what is 5x squared? Right? It would have worked if you said x is 2 fifths that, 
Then you would have had to put it in here, cancel the font. Like, you're going to waste a lot of time, but it will still work. But just get over the fact that you're trying to isolate for single things. You're trying to pattern match. Like, I'm trying to replace pieces of an equation with something else. So in that case, you should be trying to match as much as you can. So 5x squared, OK, 4 secant squared theta minus 4. OK. So let's just, did I do this all right? Please stop me if I screwed up. OK. So we're going to get a 2 fifth popping out. And then from here, we're going to pop out what? Two. two. Thank you. OK. So on the top, we're going to get a secant theta tan theta. And on the bottom, let's do a few steps at the same time. What is secant squared theta minus 1? What is tan squared square root? Tan. Yeah. Okay, so I combined a bunch of steps just so I don't yeah, drive myself crazy. Uh, plus, every time you copy something out, it's a great opportunity to screw up. Okay, so this simplifies to what? A fifth secant theta d theta. <coughs> and I really don't want to have to work this out every time, which is why I wrote it on the board as a table lookup. So this ends up being what? Can you, someone just read it for me. What? The integral. Yeah. Lawn of secant theta. Right, thanks, guys. Plus tan theta. <laughs> plus, plus c. Not all at the same time. Right. No way. Okay, so this is one fifth lawn. Oh, secant theta is what? Look at the reference triangle. What is secant theta? 5x over 2. And what is tan theta? The whole square root divided by 5. Yeah. Jeez, uh, I'm running out of OK. Uh, 5x squared minus 2 squared over 2 plus c. <laughs> Just keep in mind that you can pull out the half the same way we did the last time. Sorry, I'm just running out of board space. How's that? All right. Let's do more. But again, the technique's OK as long as you remember like the various, yes, sir. <coughs> yeah, we show it to you. Uh, what table? These tables? Yeah, we'll surely give you those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Like, we don't have to give you table lookups for things that you're supposed to be able to do. All right, so I don't know how to answer the question. So for secant theta, for example, would we get it? Um, well, you can look at it. Like, you have the formula sheet that we gave you. Don't you? No, he said he doesn't. Like, I didn't write the cheat sheet. Is it on the cheat sheet? OK, there you go. Right. You have like, access to the same cheat sheet we're going to give you on the on the. Like the problem is how many do I give you? There's like a literal like several hundred in the back of your textbook. Right? So what we're hoping is that like after designing this lecture, I decided personally I'm not taking the integral of secant. I've had to do it like six times. This is a huge waste of time. This is exactly what I'm hoping you discover in your work. That it's like, well, you should definitely maybe memorize all of definitely maybe. <laughs> the basic forms are handy to have. <coughs> I'm hoping you just naturally memorize stuff after doing several hundred weeby worth questions. Because like we don't tell you what sine theta and cos theta is. Right? Like that's expected. So I would like to give you a cheat sheet, but that always goes real pear shape real fast. You have you have people who like legitimately think they're going to write the answer to every single question of mathematics in font size 0.5, bringing magnifying glasses in. Yeah, you'd, <laughs> you should see the crazy rules we have to like implement for cheat sheets. Like no flaps. Like you can't have, you can't have a, bring a pop-up book essentially. To, like you should see how people try to cheat these things. If you're a smaller, I'd give you your textbook. Right? 
I, I, I usually give open book, open book tests and everyone's like, hooray. I'm like, you think you're going to teach yourself calculus during a midterm. That's hilarious to me, right? But that's when people go in, they're like, well, I have the textbook. I can just teach myself everything uh, under this incredible pressure and time constraint. <laughs> have you guys ever had open book tests before? Yeah. Do you still like them after having one? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, in, in uni, in university. I wish I had one. He says he wishes have an open book. You should look back at him who's shaking his head in, in, in panic. I don't know, maybe like I've never done They become way harder. For one, we can't reward you. We can't give you freebies anymore. I can't be like, state the mean value theorem. Right? We can't ask you that question. You have it. <laughs> I've had open book tests, but it's like, I, you just don't use it. It just gives you like a sense of security that if you forget something, you can look it up. Those kinds are super useful, like, I don't know. Yeah, stats. They should give you your book in stats. Memorizing all of those equations is stupid. Okay, you guys want to help me do the, uh, okay. You want to do the one that I don't, I'm not sure that I did properly? Because like the thing is, there's three reference triangles, right? So there's really only three versions of this problem. And I did how many already? Three? Two. Yeah. Oh, I did two? The third one. So which one didn't we do? I think it was... No, we did three. We did three. No, we did three. Yeah, we did three. I did all of them. You've seen all the types of tricks. They're all going to be variations on that. Um, okay, so we'll try this one. Help, help me. Nicely. <laughs> See if I did this right. Okay, so it's this. Okay, so this is an integral with respect to y, so I guess we freak out and give up, right? I, did, I never taught you how to do integration with respect to y, right? Label changes scare us. I am, of course, being facetious. I really hope you understand that. Like, you're, you're no longer scared of these, right? I just changed the label. Same techniques. I don't have to give you new reference triangles now. Huh? I think that's why you screwed up. Oh, I screwed up because it's a long one? Just write down let y. That would be funny, actually. All right, well, help me out. What, what's, what's our reference triangle? What do we got? But just tell me which side I have to put this guy on. Or, sorry, is trick substitution even worthwhile here? We should even step back. Like, why should I do a trick substitution? Why should I do a trick substitution? The first thing I said today is this technique is going to help us with the following forms. What were those forms? Okay, what do you see? Squares. You see a different, you see a sum of squares, right? You see sums of squares, and then you think to yourself, trick substitution may, may work. May work. So, what reference triangle am I using? I'll just be an opposite. So, I should put that on the opposite. I think you're correct. <coughs> we got to be really careful here, right? Because I think I did this wrong. and. So let's, let's try, try to be as careful as we can. So that means that this is what? Five? And this is what? Y. Okay. So I want to isolate Y, so I'm going to need the identity for Y over five, which is what? Secant, yeah, theta. Which means that Y is five secant theta. Which means that DY is five secant theta tan theta d theta, which means that I can rewrite this as what? Okay. Uh, hmm. All right, so we get integral y <coughs> squared, so that's 25 <coughs> secant squared theta minus 25, all of that to the square root. Now I have to swap out the dy. That gets 5 secant theta tan theta d theta. All of this 
is over y cubed, which is, I'm going to write it as 25 times 5 uh, times secant cubed theta. OK. So let's remove all of our constants. That 5 and that 5 cancel. What comes out of here? which cancels as one of those, so we're left with a fifth. We're going to be left with secant squared theta minus 1, which is equivalent to what? Tan squared. If we take the square root of that, we're left with tan. Uh, then we're left with secant. Whoop, that secant cancels. Um, and then it becomes tan squared. So hold on, okay, hold on. OK, so I'm just going to do this. So you got secant squared on the bottom. Right? No, we have to know those things. Oh, it took it out already. Two tens. Two tens. The one next to the secant. Okay, okay, so we have tan theta. That's from the bracket. Yeah. And then that secant goes away. Yeah. I'm left with another tan theta. Okay. Now on the bottom, you're left with secant squared theta. Okay, so this is one fifth integral tan squared over secant squared, which is sine squared. Yeah? Yeah? All right, this is, we got sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And we're dividing by 1 over cos, which means we multiply by cos squared. Right? So in my assessment, I get 1 fifth integral sine squared theta d theta. OK, well, that's what I calculated. It just doesn't feel right. Well, because I check it up, I checked it with Wolfram, and they did an integration by parts. And then they did a trick substitution. Well, yeah, you can do this. You can do this with an integration by parts, right? It's going to push the d denominator down. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it could, we can remove the, well, it will make it simpler. You can do an integration by parts. So your answer wasn't equivalent to theirs? It couldn't. So if it can't do the computation, it just spits back what you gave it. It's like, this is equal to the integral minus this. I'm like, oh. I also try taking the, I just can't do the pattern matching. Plug in a value and then Subject. Yeah, but then I'll only be able to um, verify it at like a finite many sample points, which is not the same thing. Yeah, but what are the chances that these like three values? Yes. Little, okay. but that doesn't suffice. As, I'm a mathematician. Don't so offend really me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is how the engineers operate. That's why bridges fall down. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Come at me, engineers. Well, I don't know. Work it out again, but. Um, you may get frustrated. Or try to try to confirm this is the right answer with Wolfram somehow. Like I even asked it to take the derivative so I could check the integrants, but it still gets confused. All right, the square roots are hard to use. I even tried doing it with like way more advanced techniques, like checking all like the Taylor series approximation. Okay, let's forget that. You're gonna have to know what that means by the end of this term. You're gonna have to know that statement's gonna have to be meaningful to you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give you a little warm up question. And then go do the worksheet. I, I did a, put a bunch of questions on there. Any questions? Yeah? All right. So we'll just call it for today. What time is it? It's 12, 12.